If you're wondering whether microneedling can really improve your hair loss, grow thicker hair and reduce acne scars, choosing the wrong device could mean less effective results or worse, more hair loss and scarring. Navigating the world of microneedling can be really confusing with various tools like the derma roller, derma stamp and derma pen, each promising transformative results. However, not all devices are created equal and I've tested them all and in this video I'll break down the differences of these microneedling devices and share personal insights to help you choose the right device for you to maximize your hair growth results ensuring you don't waste time, money, or worse, damage your scalp. Microneedling has become a hot topic for hair loss and skincare, and it's known for its effectiveness in treating everything from hair loss to acne scars. But with so many tools available, it can be super overwhelming to choose the right one. And I have been using the Derma Roller to treat my hair loss for years, and I've conducted extensive research to perfect the triple T, which stands for tool, technique, and timing. First, let's address why microneedling matters, then we'll be breaking down each device, and at the end of the video, I will be sharing my triple T, that is tool, technique, and time, so make sure you watch till the end. Microneedling is backed by many scientific studies. Check out my microneedling versus minoxidil video for more insights into the specific studies but basically, microneedling increases blood flow. It increases collagen production, as well as IGF-1, which is a hair growth factor. This, all of these help to restore harmony to the scalp and stimulate hair growth. And what's great about the Derma Roller is that if you are applying a hair growth tonic on your scalp, that is going to be amplified. So the micro injuries that the microneedling device does to your scalp creates little incisions, which then your body goes to heal it and then in turn helps stimulate hair growth. Okay, so number one, the first device we're gonna be looking at is the derma roller. So this is a handheld roller covered in micro needles that you manually roll across the skin to puncture the upper layer, promoting collagen production and hair growth. But not all derma rollers are made equal. So when I began my hair loss journey, I was using a derma roller with fake needles. Eek! So these needles looked like triangular knives and they were made out of titanium. So these are the most common derma rollers on the internet. A lot of brands sell these type of derma rollers. So obviously I went ahead and got it. But what I discovered was that they can actually cause more scarring. So I actually put that derma roller straight in the bin and that's why I wanted to create my own derma roller with real individual needles. So when you are picking a derma roller, you have to make sure that it's one with individual stainless steel needles. The reason being is that titanium is a stronger material than stainless steel. So actually it's quite difficult to make the needles sharp when you're dealing with titanium. So what are the pros and cons of a derma roller? So the number one one pro is that it's very economical so this is the cheapest on the list so in terms of investment you can definitely try the derma roller without having to fork out lots of cash um next it's very simple to use without any electronic parts or settings so you literally just grab the derma roller and roll that's literally it nothing to it so really simple to use and is great for beginners next is it's very effective for large surface areas like the scalp or your cheeks think acne scars and you want to create the least amount of friction when you are microneedling because there's nothing worse when you have to have weekly sessions of microneedling and it's too hard to use or it takes up a lot of time so for me time is really important so the fact that it can cover a large surface area is really really useful next it is very easy to clean so using a soft bristle toothbrush with hand antibacterial hand wash and then followed by rubbing alcohol bath um, makes it super easy to clean the needles. Right, the cons. So the needles can become blunt, so you wanna make sure to change it every three to four months. Now you might be wondering, does using these devices actually hurt? So we'll get into the pain factor and how to minimize discomfort next. My personal experience with the derm roller with regards to pain and my pain threshold is that Whenever you are pricking yourself with needles, it's gonna hurt. There's no beating around the bush about it. And it's something that gets better with time. So I have found that 
with the extra control of the derm roller, you know, I have full control over the depth, over the pressure, over how far it rolls. That allows me to control the derm roller so I'm not inducing a lot of pain. When I first started using the derm roller, it was painful, but as time goes on, it becomes less painful. And I think you just have to kind of get used to it. So the next device is the stamp. So this device resembles a stamp and uses a spring mechanism to insert needles directly into the skin rather than rolling over it. Now, interestingly, I have tried the derma stamp. And one thing that I quickly realized when I was using it was I was stamping on my scalp, but I didn't feel like it was going in. And one of the really important things with microneedling for hair loss is you want to go at a depth of 1.5 millimeters. So you have the epidermis, the dermis, and you want to go past the epidermis into the dermis to be able to produce collagen. So that's where collagen is produced. And I was finding my 1.5 millimeter derma stamp just weren't going in. And I was really confused. And then I realized the bed of nails. So the bed of nails is when you can stand on a bed of nails or you can push a balloon on a bed of nails and it doesn't penetrate your foot. So you can literally stand there. It might be a little bit painful, but it's actually distributing your weight across the bed of nails. And that's exactly what was happening with the derma stamp. So that's one thing to remember about the derma stamp. Now, pros, it is less painful than using a microneedling device because as I mentioned, you are distributing the weight. So you, um, you're you actually not getting as much of a penetration, but you're also distributing the pressure across the whole stamp, which makes it less painful, but as a con to that, it makes it less effective. So what that means is that you will need to roll. So one roll on the derma roller is equivalent to like five or more stamps. And potentially you're not getting the same depth as the derma roller. The con of the derma stamp is that it is more expensive than the derma roller and it's slightly harder to clean. Um, but because it's similar to the derma roller, it, you can follow the same protocol when you are cleaning it. What I will say is that it does require more manual effort than one roll. And because of the rolling effect versus the stamping effect, you are not covering the same area effectively as the derm roller. Okay, so the next device on the list is the pen. So the derma pen is an electric device that rapidly punctures the skin with fine needles, adjustable depths and speeds. And it is the most advanced form of microneedling. So story time. I went to get a microneedling facial from my local salon. And looking back now, I literally scream. <laughs> she was using a derma pen on my face, but instead of dabbing it like you're meant to, she was dragging it on my face. This is a major no-no because dragging a derma pen isn't just ineffective, it's like trying to drive 60 miles per hour with a flat tire. It is so, so damaging. So if you are gonna use a derma pen, make sure to use it correctly. So pros of the derma pen. So the pros are it has a very high precision with adjustable depth settings. So you can control how far it goes in. And because of its small surface area, you are targeting specific areas with high precision. So it will literally get that area. It is definitely less painful because you are getting that fast electric operation. So it makes the process smoother and typically less uncomfortable compared to more manual methods. So I will say it's less painful. The other great thing about the derma pen is that it's very hygienic as the needles are disposable. So once you've used it once, you dispose of the needles and you'll use a fresh pair. So it's super, super hygienic. It also means you don't actually have to uh, disinfect the derma pen because you are just changing the needles each time you're using it. Okay, so the cons, this is the most expensive option. You have to buy the needles, which are disposable and can only be used once. So that gets quite pricey, as well as the cost of the derma pen itself. That's quite expensive. It's the least economical option on the list. So the other con is that it takes a very long time to cover a large surface area. And what that means is, say you are parting your hair and you're going through each parting, um, that's going to take a very long time versus micro needling, which can be a lot faster, a lot quicker, and you're covering more ground um, at a shorter period of time. So from a time perspective, it is more onerous and long. But if you are using it for your skin, perhaps on one section of your cheek, 
then that would be okay. I do find that the effectiveness of the results, I can see a difference when using the pen versus the derma roller. The derma roller results come about more quickly, whereas the derma pen, you'll need to do a lot more sessions to see the same amount of results. The other con is that it can be intimidating for beginners due to its mechanical nature and because, you know, those needles are going pretty, pretty fast. So it can be a little bit scary when using it because using it incorrectly, like I mentioned, by dragging it or using it incorrectly can cause a lot of scarring and damage. So you don't want to do that. Um, the other con is that it is noisier. I mean, personally for me, that's not a massive deal, but I know some people, you know, and those people that you can't like eat next to and you have to put the TV on, that might be uh, an issue. The other con is the risk of overuse. So it's really easy to overuse the Derma pen because of the comfort and efficiency. So it doesn't feel like anything has happened because of how quickly the needles are going in and out. So because of that and the lack of pain, uh, that can lead to irritation or damage if you're not careful because it just feels like, you know, nothing's happening and you're overusing it. So you kind of have to be careful. Okay, so now guys, I'm gonna tell you about my triple T, the triple threat, which is tool, technique, and time. So this is my personal specific approach to microneedling, and that is from my own use of these devices. So number one is the tool. So the tool is pretty much the derma roller that you use, the depth that you use, um, and that is kind of really important that you wanna make sure you're using the right tool. So 1.5 millimeter is the optimum depth, as I mentioned, for activating hair growth, and activating collagen in your skin if you are treating your acne scars. I personally find the Derma Roller is the easiest to use, it's the cheapest, and most importantly, it saves me the most amount of time because the amount of effort that I need to put in to get the results is so much better than the other devices. So I would always pick a real needle Derma Roller, not the one with triangular knives that are on discs, and they're cheaper to manufacture for a reason. Those discs are a lot cheaper than the individual stainless steel needles because they are placed individually by hand, whereas the triangular knives and the triangular discs are made um, and not handmade, so they're a lot easier to produce. Next, the technique. So you always want to disinfect before and after use. You want to make sure your scalp is clean, no product buildup, and that you're exfoliating your scalp regularly so that it can be the optimum environment for microneedling to occur. And you want to always achieve pinpoint bleeding or redness in the area that you're microneedling before moving on. So that is a threshold in clinical studies to show that, that you're getting to the epidermis. And by doing so, you're increasing collagen. And that is where you want to be. Um, so that's a hallmark of being effective in your technique. You want to make sure you're rolling in all directions and always lifting after each pass. So say you're going horizontally, you keep going horizontally and you lift after each pass and then you go the other direction and then the other direction lifting after each pass. So horizontally, vertically and diagonally. Now the last thing is time. Once a week is the optimum time for using the microneedling device. Um, a lot of studies use this time session and always make sure that your scalp is fully healed before you microneedle again. So that is the triple threat, triple T. Um, I hope that was useful. But to wrap up, each device has its pros and cons, and the best choice really depends on your specific skin concerns, your specific hair loss concerns, and comfort level. And remember, it's about making a well-informed decision that suits your needs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.